So you know how sometimes you wake up and you just like have a craving for some crazy thing? This has been one of those weeks. I've been craving something all week. Live monkey brains. Yep, watched Faces of Death and just decided that I had to have live monkey brains. So today on Cooking Under the Influence, we'll be slaughtering our own monkeys while we eat them. That'll be awesome. Oh, lighten up. I'm joking. It's Baba Ganoush. She's kind of stupid like me. I took the short bus to culinary school. Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence with me, your host and chef du jour. I'm Sean. I'm not going to be slaughtering any live monkeys. Instead, I have had a craving all week and I want baba ganoush. It's really hard to get monkeys. But as all good chefs know, we need a drink before we start cooking. Now, I've always done cold drinks. Let's do a hot drink today. Mulled wine. No, I didn't say moldy wine. Mulled. Like you mull something over in your head. Let's mull this, shall we? Start with a little bit of water. Maybe a quarter of a cup or so. Don't turn the heat on. We're not going to do it hot. We're just, we just want to warm it. We're not going to boil it. Do a little bit of sugar. Oops, that was kind of a lot. Oh well. Remember the last time I did sugar, I did it just sugar on the heat and it turned into friggin' witch's brew. Oh shit. Okay, I fucked that up. Witch's brew of bubbly cauldron. Let's not do that again. Okay, so uh, that's heating up. Let's add our mulling spices. You can, you can buy mulling spices. Let's just do it like homemade. Basically just making a pie with wine. Get a cinnamon stick, put a few clo whole cloves in there. Alright, we're going to get some ground allspice, maybe a teaspoon of that, some uh, nutmeg, a little bit of orange juice. So basically we're making potpourri. We're going to add some wine to it. Add your wine to your mulling spices. Right now, especially after you put the wine in, don't boil it because it will boil all the alcohol away and that would be just tragic. Can't have that. Just be careful when you drink it, you don't choke on a clove. Get some nice brandy or cognac. Maybe a half a cup or so. Eh, or more. Remember, brandy is made from wine. That's why you can mix it and it doesn't taste gross. That's some good stuff. All right, let's get cooking. What's baba ganoush? It's like a Middle Eastern thing. It's basically eggplant, a garlicky eggplant dip. Real easy. If you're a vegetarian, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna get a bunch of eggplants out here. Just nice big black beauty eggplants. Okay, so once we've peeled our monkey brains, we're gonna roast them in the oven. Slice through the uh, both halves of the cerebellum here. 375. Alright, so we got our monkey brains here. Let's put them with the medulla oblongata face up. Alright, where's my drink? Holy crap. I need that. Ooh, clove. Pita bread. I don't have any pita bread. So let's make some. Right, like I said before, the only time you're really going to see me measuring stuff on here is baking. That's the only thing that's a little kind of precise. I like unbleached white flour, so use that. You can use whole wheat, whatever, I don't care. Uh, we're going to put three cups. 750 milliliters of flour. About a teaspoon of salt, maybe two teaspoons of sugar. I'm putting that, the sugar, into the sugar in the measuring cup. Watch, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to use two packets of yeast. Tepid water, mix it with the yeast. Alright, this is called proofing your yeast. I got about a half a cup of water with the two packs of yeast, a little pinch of flour, and the sugar. It's just like a little beaker of brown nastiness. In 10 minutes, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Alright, 10 minutes later, we got a whole big giant fluffy mug of yeasty water. 
It used to look like diarrhea. Now it looks like frothy diarrhea. Mm. That brandy makes a freaking difference. Yeasty water. That was only half a cup. Let's get another quarter of a cup. They call it play dough for a reason. That's the consistency you want your dough. Once your dough is in a nice little doughy wad, it's time to start kneading it. All you folks that use bread machines to knead your dough, you're missing out on the best part of making bread. Oh, but I don't know how to knead dough. You know how to play with Play-Doh? You know how to knead dough. You can work up a good sweat, nice upper body, work out here. Okay, why do we knead dough? Kneading it activates the gluten which gets it to be, which makes it all nice and holdy together. -y. You can take your frustrations out, just beat it up. Just think of somebody you hate. Fucking beat their ass! God damn it! I beat you! Some nice relaxing classical music is lovely to play when you're eating bread. Like that person that spilled that spilled shit all over my lunch bag at work and didn't clean it up. Or that person that threw away part of my lunch or ate it or something, stole it. People that don't watch cooking under the influence. Bread. It's really hard to fuck up bread. Now I've done it, but it took effort. After about 10 minutes, you'll start to feel a difference in the, in the dough. It gets nice and elastic. It's not as crumbly. You get a clean bowl. Coat it with a little bit of olive uh, oil. Put your dough in there. Cover your dough and let it rise, preferably in a warm place. This is what it looks like at the beginning. How long do you let it rise? Until it's at least doubled in its size. The whole time you were doing, doing, doing the dough, doing the do. whole time you're kneading the bread and everything, your eggplant was roasting, so it's just about done. That's all your monkey brain eggplant. It's nice and mushy and soft. Monkey brain. Right, you know what I haven't had in 20 years and it's wonderful is roasted chestnuts. Last time I had them I was in Paris in 1991 or something. So I found some chestnuts at the store. Make a little X in the skin so they don't explode when they're roasting. I mean, seeing as I got the oven hot already and I got a bunch of chestnuts, May as well roast some chestnuts. Chest nuts. It's not like you have your nuts on your chest. Let's bump it up to 400. Just because why not? Into the oven. Continue with our live monkey brains. Baba Ganoush. Get a bunch of chives from the garden. Chop those up nice and fine. Put that in our monkey brains. We also need some tahini. What is tahini? It's sesame seed paste. Let's put some of that in there. Maybe a half a cup. Not too much. You don't want to have a whole bowl of sesame paste. Because it tastes like... I don't know. It tastes like wood. Some olive oil. Oh, you just swallowed a clove. Put a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper and some cumin. A little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. Take the cap off of the pepper, otherwise it won't go into the bowl. Just kind of stupid like me. I took the short bus to culinary school. I never went to culinary school. Okay, this is a big, giant, humongous jar of chopped garlic. Holy crap. Oh my God! This will not get you a date. Lots of garlic. The hand mixer gives you a nice, uh, chunky baba ganoush. The food processor and the blender gives you a real smooth baba ganoush. I prefer the chunky, so I'm gonna do that. So shit goes fucking everywhere. Maybe you could do half in the blender. I mean. Yeah, half in the blender and half with the thing. Do half of it in the blender. 
I mean, it goes every freaking where. Oh, but it tastes really good. I mean, look at this. It's every damn where. To celebrate my little cleanup session, instead of some more mulled wine, which is great, by the way, but it's kind of too sweet, let's just have some brandy. That may be what I wanted in the first place. Brandy. All right, let's see how these chestnutty things are doing. Ooh, they're smoking. I'm guessing they're done. Chestnuts roasting in a bleeding oven. Brandy nipping at your nose. Though they say many times, many ways. Let's drink a little more. And it shows. These are hot. Ow! So I say they're hot, and then I touch them. Strong work. All right, let's try these roasted chestnuts. I don't know why it's black like that. Okay. I'll go get some gravel out back. Might be better. Not a raging success. Okay, who romanticized this shit in a friggin' song? Actually, the shell tastes better than the nut. Maybe not quite, but it's achieved twice its original size. So, you know what? We're gonna call that done with rising. I did it on bake oil before, and it came out, the pitas came out okay, but not great. So I'm gonna try, try that. I'm gonna try them under the broiler this time. Cut our dough, each slice, each chunk about a little bigger than an egg. Roll your dough out into a pita bread shape, which is round. Quarter inch thick. Okay, if you have any problems with quarter inch thick, it's a fucking pancake. If you drink too much mulled wine, you'll just throw up and nobody wants that. <coughs> Let's put these pita bread rolled out doughy things under the low broiler and see how that works. Just for like three or four minutes, not long. Okay. I turned it on high, that may not have been the best idea. It's a little smoky in here. Burned pitas. Awesome. This batch may not be the best, I'm thinking. I think we're done. Under the bro, it takes a constant vigil, vigil, vigilance. This side up, that side down. It might be better just to go to the store and get some pita bread because these came out iffy. Let's try it though. What the hell? Pita bread, baba ganoush. Oh. Not bad at all. I'm dripping something on the floor. Eggplant is the vegetarian version of live monkey brains. Thank you very much for watching. Bon appetit and adios. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire.